This is the Final Whistle Podcast from the Wrexham AFC media team. The final score, Harrogate Town nil, Wrexham nil, a pulsating top of the table match in which Wrexham, well, bounced back well from the poor performance at Sutton, a clean sheet and a, a solid toe-to-toe performance away from home against a good opposition and also a game that should have won. Lots of opportunities squandered, especially in the second half, against a strong Harrogate side. Wrexham made four changes. They tend to make those changes, don't they? But uh, maybe the big news was uh, a non-change, if you like. Luke Summerfield lining up despite being sent off on Saturday, having, to my eyes, very surprisingly won his appeal against the red card he got at Sutton, and he'd be a major figure in midfield. However, Wrexham struggled early on. Harrogate really put in intense pressure, hemmed Wrexham into the penalty area, a succession of dangerous set pieces, and they kept winning the second balls and putting them back in. And for the first 20 odd minutes, really, well, Wrexham survived because they defended their penalty area ferociously. Pearson, Lawler, and Roberts, in particular, standing out with their ability to win headers and make blocks. It was an impressive defensive performance by Wrexham in the face of a, a quality onslaught. Having said that, ironically, by far the best chance in that period fell to Wrexham and twice got away well on a breakaway the second time was 2 on 2 and they failed to play the right pass but the first one was a glorious chance and then they hit that pass left Mike Fondock completely clear one on one with the keeper but unfortunately for Wrexham he failed to find the target James Belshaw came up quickly and saved well to his right but Fondock will really should have done better Harrogate well it was just sort of a pressure and the odd half chance a shot from the edge of the area took a deflection and went behind in the goal mouth although the shot was going wide and then there was a free kick swung into the box centre back high was often losing fond up at the far post he managed to strike a volley from an angle leaned and pushed it into the goal mouth Harrogate player went down as Wrexham had scrambled it clear Harrogate shouting for the penalty referee wasn't interested <coughs> and that was pretty much it in terms of Goldmouth instance, although it was an exciting match with Wrexham starting to regain a measure of control and midfield, which was certainly robust with Summerfield joined by Akeel Wright and Brad Walker. Started the grind away forward. Rutherford put in a, a heck of a shift as he always did as well. And Wrexham started to hold themselves back into the game uh, and make some opportunities as well. Fond up. Uh, jumping and, and as he did throughout the match causing problems with the centre-backs didn't win the ball but created a loose ball Summerfield could only poke it back too far up on the floor he did well crab football style to work it back to Summerfield he broke onto it and from 20 yards uh, drove it a, a shot which he put narrowly off target then from the I beg your pardon, he was deflected now of targets and then from the corner he swept it in and Pearson attacking it managed to stretch and get their six yards out put his header just over the first minute of added time and Harrogate had an opportunity carried during a 25 yards which leans and was able to save low to his right quite comfortably and then the last moments of the half uh, Walker doing well to intercept and hit, make terrific contact with a 25 yard vo- 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 volley but he put it wide of the left post second half continued the pattern of the latter stages of the first as Wrexham uh, showed a good element of control in the middle of the pitch <clears throat> and as the half wore on they started to create opportunities another poor back pass sparked things fond up racing after it just beaten to it by the keeper Belshaw fond up caught him Belshaw had a long period of treatment before he continues. Fondop was given a yellow, one of those I'd like to see on the replay. Uh, looked at me like the sort of ball striker really ought to be going for. It was a suicidal back pass. And if Fondop wasn't going to commit himself to that, he'd have had a serious questions asked to him. So I think a bit unlucky to get a yellow there, although, okay, the replay might show he went in with his studs up. But from then on, Wrexham started to make chances. Roberts winning the ball high at the pitch. Feeding the ball down the right hand side to Rutherford. Tremendous cross by him. Fond up on the six yard box, stretching. Should have scored, really, but put it wide off the left post. Then Summerfield with a free kick just outside the box, which he ripped over the wall. Good parry, though, to his right by Belshaw to push the ball away. Then it was Pearson. Playing a straight ball through to Fondop, who might have been offside, but picked it up and did well, carried it to the edge of the area, committing the centre-backs, and then drove a shot, which Belshaw held high to his right. He knocked it long, Pearson put it back in there again, 
and this time well it was a nice flick by Fondop and then Luke Young who had just come on in midfield for the injured Akil Wright with an excellent first time return pass Fondop again one on one with lots of time against the keeper this time he struck it very well but Belshaw stood up and made an absolutely some tremendous save to push it away from the corner the ball was swept into the goal mouth cleared Pearson put, uh, picked it up 25 yards out and fed a lovely ball to Maguire Drew with a clear sight of goal but Maguire Drew's first touch was poor and the chance was gone but this terrific spell of pressure continues from a corner the ball swept in Fondot went down on his knees and looked like his shirt was being pulled nothing was given there was a nice a big scramble underneath the bar but ultimately nothing came of it the keel right as I said gone off injured the victim I think of the, the pitch which played perfectly well, but uh, Wright, just saw, with no one near him, suddenly went hopping down and turned his ankle, I think, because he turned or his knee. That looked a little worrying. He came on, back on briefly while the substitution was ready. He looked very uncomfortable. Let's hope it's uh, just a minor tweak because Wright had looked good in midfield on his return to the starting lineup. The closing stages actually, Harrogate finally. For the first time in the second half, we're able to put a bit of pressure on Wrexham. A long throw from Burrow on the left-hand side. Bounced a couple of times across the six-yard box nicely. Wrexham managed to deal with it. And there were a number of late set pieces, which again, Wrexham defended well from dangerous positions. And indeed, in the last minutes of the game, Wrexham might even have nicked the points after all. The ball knocked long. <laughs> Stuart Bevan, who brought on in the last minute of added time did well to back into his man touch it on and Young breaking down the right hit a, a lovely inviting cross across the face of goal nobody could get a touch to it it was a good performance by Raxon a good bounce back from uh, that poor performance against Sutton frustratingly though they just couldn't find the, the finishing touch Fondock maybe <laughs> epitomised that <clears throat> he missed two one-on-ones and a six-yard box chance and yet, to be fair to him, he, he, he lasted the 90 because he did very well engaging the centre-backs, fighting, holding the ball, bringing people into play. And maybe that was the point. Rex was approached very, very good, but there was no finish. And therefore, a goal is final score. For further analysis, have a listen to what Rob Stead, Ollie Williams and myself thought of the game on Canon FM. This is the Final Whistle podcast with the Wrexham AFC media team. Well, it was... Uh... That was very exciting, but goalless as all he said, barren in the end. And uh, but a, a, a very, very open game, and, and two sides who came into it second and third. I think did I see a gesture there at Wrexham fourth now. I think in the the live table. But uh, they've gone down to third and fourth, but two strong sides who uh, really uh, it looked like they could be up there at the end. Harrogate threatening a lot with set pieces and coming on very strong at the end. Wrexham having got more of a grip as the, se the second half wore on, uh, but missing chances. And well, it is maybe revealing that Harrogate's man of the match, the sponsor's man of the match, was the goalkeeper because Belshaw, well, from the Harrogate perspective, stood strong, stood tall, and made a number of good saves. But from Wrexham's perspective, like Fondot missed some good chances, though his builder play was good. Wrexham's first goal is away draw in 14 matches. That nil-nil was a really drab affair at Solly Hull. This, the exact opposite sort of nil-nil. And uh, Rob, ultimately, I think, well, you said that Sam Ricketts would always want to go into a game looking to win it. And I think ultimately, he'll be disappointed that we didn't take our chances and get three points out of that. I think he will, but I also think that he'll be very pleased with our performance. Um, especially the midfield it's, it was a packed midfield um, I think we were just lacking that final touch maybe we need two up front I don't know but uh, I think found up on his own up there is not working for me yeah so, and also Ollie I mean uh, showed good character after Saturday which is poor and after the opening 10 minutes of this when we were just penned into our own penalty area and and desperately just had to fight to stay in the game I'll tell you what after that opening 10-15 minutes I thought we were in for a pasty here if I'm being totally honest but we defended it well they were peppering the box and I guess ironically for Harrigan if they had those physical players rather than the nice you know play really clever football football rather, well we usually rather than the long ball if they had those physical players I reckon they could have 
pick up two or three in that game. But it, for me, good the mark, good the mark back when he came on at the end of that case. Then, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I look at that was a well ground out point. That's for me, that. But strangely enough, for a game where where Harrogate dominated so well, especially in the early phases, I'm disappointed we haven't got the win because there were two or three chances for Wrexham that quite frankly should have and could have buried. Well, yeah, I mean, they dominated the early phase of the game, first 20 odd minutes, certainly. But I thought Wrexham earned the right to get back into the game as it wore on. Uh, and by half time, we'd, you know, we'd calmed them. We kept them at arm's length. Uh, we, we gained more control, as Rob said, in midfield. And then, frankly, the second half, it was it was the opposite pattern in a way. The first half hour of the second half, uh, I would say that, uh, Rob, we, we bossed it. And we had that little spell, didn't we, of uh, a chance, which then led to a series of corners that they couldn't clear. And it really felt like a matter of time before we'd scored. It was only the last five minutes or so when Harrogate put long balls in from set pieces that we suddenly found ourselves under pressure in the second half. Oh yeah, we were, we were definitely on the uh, front foot for the most of the first half, I think. Um, it's just missing that final touch, and uh, yeah, it, it felt like we were winning at some point, but I don't know. I think it's a good point, because um, obviously Harrogate don't get the three, um, which if they did, they'll be, they'll be quite a way ahead, but I think it's a good point away from home yeah absolutely and a good clean sheet after what happened last Saturday um, we'll give Rob just a moment to contemplate his man of the match choice well, I must say it's a rather nicer choice than, than Paul had on Saturday when thankfully Rob Leighton made a couple of late saves to make it a no brainer because until then it was an impossible job but before we do that uh, Ollie, I mean what about that away support as well I've got to say 717 uh, on Ask Wrexham uh, Lee SYFC saying what a club 717 fans Andy Davis saying outstanding away support I mean they were superb again weren't they oh wait you got need a microphone don't you sorry oh, are you surprised I mean <laughs> look at I mean, look at the support we've had all season even when we go down south uh, Tuesday nights at Maidenhead I mean the amount of support we're taking down there the amount of support we bring tonight you know especially after taking the 3-0 hammering at Sutton you know yeah, there's a lot of people who may have thought oh, do I well they've turned up today they've earned they've helped earn Wrexham a point and they've nearly helped earn Wrexham all three you know it, it, it never fails to you know never fails to amaze me these, these Wrexham supporters and, and it was an absolutely brilliant following once again and I expect to see a continued great following like this all season a bit like we did last season the start of last season we had some great away followings and the results were coming in with it you know the first sort of three months of the season I expect to see that throughout this season that support they'll, they'll be there the team will turn up for them and hopefully this can be a successful season both on and off the pitch. I hope the team turn up for them otherwise you're, you're very entitled to a yeah, refund well, yeah. to be fair. Um, <laughs> the, um, uh, I'll tell you what they did as well rather well I think they put a bit of pressure on the referee who in the first half hour uh, the players and the fans were on his back and the decisions that uh, Rex weren't happy with seemed to diminish as the game went on it, it seemed to me. But anyway Rob man of the match uh, a few good contenders I'd say. I'd say yes, um, but ultimately, I think it would be uh, Summerfield, right in the middle. Even though it was in the middle, he covered every blade of plastic, as Ollie said. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he did make some mistakes, but he redeemed himself straight after them. And uh, I think he was a, it was a welcome return for him because he might have not played today. Yeah, he was he was full of energy, wasn't he? He was trying to prompt. He covered an awful lot in midfield, as Rob said as well. I mean, the midfield did do very well. Uh, you know, sort of very diligent, and at the back as well. I thought Pierce and, and, and Lawler and Roberts in particular were, were rock solid when put under pressure. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what sums up uh, Luke Summerfield there for you. Lost the ball in the midfield, and it was a really good chance for Harrogate. Who's the man who trapped back, sprinted back to get onto that ball, made the challenge and got it clear. Luke Summerfield, he made up for every error he, ma he, he makes. He makes it up twice over, doesn't he? Uh, as for the back four, yes, yeah, solid Sean Pierce. And Jay Lawler. Um, Matt, you know, when you lose such a good partner as Manny Smith, it's going to be troublesome for you. But Jay Lawler slotted him really well, and actually today really, really impressed me. For the first time, I can say I thought it was a really, really good performance from him. Yeah, I like Lawler, and I think he likes those sort of battles, you know, physical aerial battles, fighting on the floor. I think 
he's a good centre back for those sort of situations. Absolutely. So. Uh, Wrexham emerge with a goalless draw I enjoyed the hashtag Ask Wrexham and Andy Davis recommended a good chippy and Ask Wrexham around the corner from here a couple of weeks ago I'm going to take advantage of it with the final score of Harrogate Town nil Wrexham nil we'll hand back to the studio This is the Final Whistle Podcast from the Wrexham AFC media team